Okay, we got some new info here uh, on a revision on a timeline of the oldest Negroid skull ever found. Um, this uh, guy's telling you in a post that he had previously posted that the 6,500-year-old Asilar skeleton discovered in Mali was the earliest example of a Negroid African, and I thought it was 6,600-year-old 6, or 4,600 B.C., but they've tweaked it a little bit. But it turns out there's a slightly older skull with Negroid features from farther south in West Africa at Iwu Iluru, Nigeria, that seems to be much better candidate. But then we had to look into it. So this is a double revision. Now, check this out. In Mani in 1978, it said that the oldest known skeleton of a West African was found in Nigeria at Iwu Iluru, and it is of a Negroid man uh, and is dated from 9250 BC, give or take 150 years, so 9100 BC or so. So um, that would be a lot older, uh, but it said Negroid, and whenever they look into the thing, he's actually uh, not a current or a modern human. He's actually somebody like, uh, you know, like Homo erectus or something. It's a proto Negroid. In fact, Owlsworth Jones in 2002 uh, said a human burial described as proto-Negroid was found at the base of the succession of Iwo Iliru with a date of 11,200 before present. So that'd be 9,200, give or take 200 years, so around 9,000 years. And then uh, Philipson in 2005 found a single human skeleton some 12,000 years old so almost 10,000 BC, from the lowest level of Iwu Ileru has been described as already showing specifically Negroid features. So it wasn't a modern Negroid that they had found. The oldest modern Negroid found is still 4,600, or now they're going to say 4,500 BC. And the oldest... Negroid or proto Negroid, which would be like not a Cro Magnon, even because those are considered to be modern humans logistically. So uh, it'd have to be something like Homo erectus or whatever, uh, that form of Negroid and the oldest form that they found. And it also shows you how early and not too long ago the change was made um, in giving you that. They also give you something too. They tell you note that there have been other candidates for the oldest Negroid skull but in East rather than West Africa, such as Nejit Qatar at 33,000 before the present or 3100 BC and Jebel Sahaba or Wadi Halfa in Mesolithic Nubia. However, these are very contentious and in all likelihood not Negroid, given that the East Africans were still non-Negroid until much more recently. And they have an article on that too. I guess we could go there real quick since this is such a short video. But, uh, so when you look at their, uh, thing, and of course, here's the elder statesman who ended up having to, uh, drink hemlock and kill himself because of saying things in a stately way down there. But, uh, yeah, and it seems like, oh, uh, by the way, just throw this in, Ethiopian did not mean the little country that people think that it does today. In fact, Greeks, which were this pale, pretty much, you see in the picture, anybody tanner than that, and they refer to them as swarthy and dark and Ethiopians, which means sunburnt faces, which kind of indicates a tanning. Anyhow, I don't know how anybody ever took that to mean anything else. But, uh, well, I, I guess I do know why. But um, So, racial affinities of prehistoric East Africans, Afrocentrics and Nordicists alike, tend to assert that early East Africans were Negroid. Since East Africa was the source of multiple migrations of early humans out of Africa, this allows the former, or the Afrocentricists, to assert a Negroid stage in the evolution of Eurasians whenever we realize now that there's really no attachments and it's two totally separate divergent things that really didn't have much contact with each other at all. But, uh, are to postulate a later mythological stage of Negroid East African culture bearers. Uh, this is the uh, we was Egyptians thing, which has been debunked so long ago. The only black people that showed up in that area were the Nubians, and uh, they weren't even allowed into Egypt by decree. Senior Suret the uh, the third has the Simna stele, which is 
just one of many that showed you the effect and stuff off of it. And so, and of course they're Nubians, not Egyptian. So then you'd never say they were, but black people like to try to point out somehow that, but the West Africans that claim all of this, of course, aren't even related to the Nubians. So it's, it's just kind of a lost cause for all of that. But, uh, Nordicis, though, on the other hand, dissatisfied with the paucity to non-existence of genuine sub-Saharan African genetic markers in southeastern Europe. So they, they wonder why there's not a blend coming up out of Africa with their out of Africa theory, which actually everything that ever came out of Africa was Caucasian, and everything we've ever found in North Africa at primordial times was all Caucasian, East Africa, even Central Africa around the Green Sahara and the Horn area, uh, Hofmeyer site down in the Cape at 40,000 BC and all of these show Caucasians. So um, people though in a modern PC culture desperately want to try to change things. So um, they've insinuated that why haplogroup E3b, which originated in East Africa some 26,000 years ago, is a Negroid that mdtna haplogroup m1 which according to some also originated in east africa in paleolithic times is also somehow a negroid and uh, that's not true at all because none of the people that contain the genetics out of that have negroid features or even a, a, a just a genetic past at all uh, howell's study of the world cranionomic variation is especially relevant to the racial affinity of east africans before the expansion of Negroids into the region, like the Bantu expansion is what he's referring to. Howell studied some 2,500 skulls from 28 populations of recent Homo sapiens based on 57 metric variables on the, on the skulls. So craniometry is quite extensive, including skulls from Taeda tribe from East Africa. These recent Taeda tribes, men and women, clustered with other sub-Saharan Africans, indicating that as is obvious, recent Kenyans belong to primarily the Negroid race. But, Howells then studied prehistoric East Africans and other humans from around the world to determine whether or not they show any affinity with living races. He did this to examine whether or not the morphological complexes of modern races can be discerned in remote times. Using the same multivariate approach, he studied the Elamin Taita, the Nakuru, and Wiley's Cope J skulls from Kenya. His conclusion was that there is no racial continuity between recent Negroid East African skulls and these prehistoric remains, as the following passage illustrates. So in other words, no. Uh, results here are not, are not indicative of anything except a general non-African nature to all these skulls. Display of Popkin's differences infra reinforces this and seems to find nearer neighbors among such generalized populations as Peru, Guam, Ainu, but also Europeans or even Easter Island. So much closer to Europeans, Levantine type people, and so on. Remembering that the Taita series Bantu speakers of uh, southwestern Kenya and the recent East African skulls in Table 4 above do clearly exhibit African affiliations. It is fair to say, contra Reitmer, that there seem to be no clear continuity here in late prehistory. On the broad scale, looking at an out of Africa scenario, one would expect that in some region between southern and northeastern Africa, some differentiation would have been taking place within a Homo sapiens stock, evolving into something beginning to approximate later sub Saharan peoples on the, on the one hand and evolving in another direction on the other hand. So you, you should see something like this, but it's not seen at all in any way, shape, or form. East Africa would be like a likely location for appearance of the latter. So anyone is welcome to argue that this is what Elementia and, and others are manifesting, but the ensuing picture for East Africa is that to say, would later have been changed through replacement by the expansion of Bantu or other Negroid tribes. Yeah, so interesting there. So now the oldest uh, is going to go back uh, nowhere near uh, where we had had them at before. And I quite often uh, say 12,000 B.C., but it looks like it's around 9,000 B.C. So we're taking about 2,000 off of that. And that's actually a proto-Negroid, uh, the oldest um, 
current or a modern Negroid that you would recognize today more and such uh, is going to place somewhere around 4500 instead of 4600 BC. But yeah, like, share, and subscribe, guys, and enjoy. Lots more coming down the pipe. Peace.